optical model, Dr. Adaku Obia, your professional optometrist at Supreme Vision Eye Clinic Abuja. And so today I'll be taking you on the terminologies used in slit lamp by microscopy. Now, before we start, do not forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit the notification button for more educative content. So for the terminologies used in slit lamp by microscopy, it simply means sometimes that are associated with the use of slit lamp by microscope. And as you go further in this slit lamp by microscopy workshop, you might be hearing one, two, or three of those words. So the first one is called perfocality or coupling. Perfocality or coupling, P-A-R-F-O-C-A-L-I-T-Y. Coupling is C-O-U-P-L-I-N-G. So what it simply means is that the observation system and the illumination system, this is the observation system and this is the illumination system, they are focused on the same plane, P-L-A-N-E, despite the variation in the angle. This is the angle calibrated scale on the slit lamp by microscope. So when you're performing a direct illumination technique using the slit lamp by microscope, it is expected in perfocality that where the light is focused is directly where the eye is looking at. So it means if I place the light, I'm examining the cornea for example, I place the light to focus directly on the cornea, my eyes looking through the biomicroscope is going to be looking through and looking at the same point on the cornea where the light is focused. So that is what is called perfocality. And when the instrument is in a state of perfocality, it means the sclerotic scatter knob must be locked. This is the sclerotic scatter knob or the defocusing knob on the slit lamp by microscope. So for all direct illumination techniques you're going to be performing using the slit lamp by microscope, the slit lamp by microscope is going to be in a state of perfocality. And that means that the sclerotic scatter knob must be locked. So just to demonstrate perfocality, it simply means that where the problem is, just like what you're seeing over here, that is a problem. So I just gave an example on her nose bridge placed a paper. So on this paper, the light is directly focused on this paper and my eye is directly looking through the biomicroscope to also look at the same paper. So if this was on the eye, example the cornea, it means that this paper is a problem on the cornea. So I place the light to focus directly on this problem as well my eye looks directly through the biomicroscope to focus on the problem. So this is what perfocality means. The eye and the light is focused on the same plane, just like what you can see on the screen. So the second terminology used in slit lamp by microscopy is called decoupling. D-E-C-O-U-P-L-I-N-G, decoupling. Decoupling simply means a dissociation from perfocality and this is achieved using the sclerotic scatter knob. This is the state of the slit lamp by microscope when you're performing your indirect illumination technique. What this simply means is that in the state of perfocality, that is when you're doing your direct illumination technique, the light is directly focused on the structure you're viewing and your eye is directly looking through the bar microscope to look at the same structure. But because of the light that is directly projected or focused on that problem, it wouldn't really give you a defined shape or even the space that problem is covering. So what we now want to do in decoupling, in order to reduce glare, you now have to open up the sclerotic scatter knob. This is the sclerotic scatter knob. So when you open the sclerotic scatter knob, it enables you to change the mirror focus, just like what you can see on this slide. You see, I just opened the knob and I can change the mirror focus. This is what the mirror focus. And as I'm turning this, this mirror focus, the angle should remain the same. Look at it. This is the angle calibrated scale. This angle calibrated scale, I have kept it now on 60 
Look at it's on 60 degrees. So why I'm changing the mirror focus? Look at what I'm doing. You gently keep turning this. You can gently keep turning this. As you're changing the mirror focus, the angle here remains the same. Watch. The angle remains the same. I'm not pushing this instrument like this. I'm not moving it like this. It is just a change in the mirror focus, which is the focus of the light. So when you open this clarity scatter knob and change this light focus or this mirror focus, the light is now directly going to be focused on an adjacent structure that is beside what you want to examine. So if I place this light at the adjacent structure, it means it's going to be giving me a shining appearance there. The shadow casted from that light now gives me a cool background to view whatever thing I want to see. So I want to examine the nose. Example, I wouldn't place this light directly on the nose. I have to place it on my cheek. So on my cheek is giving a shiny appearance. It will now give me a dark background here. Why the problem I'm looking at is going to appear white on a dark background. This is what decoupling is all about. And that is going to be the state of your slit lamp by microscope for all indirect illumination technique. So for easy understanding of what perfocality and decoupling is, of what coupling and decoupling is, I'm going to be demonstrating. Now, in perfocality, your eyes are looking through the bio microscope and then the light is directly focused on the problem. So it means where the eye is looking is directly where the light is focused, just like what you can see on the screen. But in decoupling, which is dissociation from perfocality, all we want to do is to unlock the sclerotic scatter knob. This is the sclerotic scatter knob or the defocusing knob. And then you just have to change the mirror focus. By changing the mirror focus, what happens is that it just allows you to move away this light directly out of that structure and position the light to focus on an adjacent structure. So, a shadow casted from that adjacent structure, as you can see on the screen, now gives you a cool background to view the problem. This is the reason why an indirect illumination technique, pathologists are going to appear white on a black background, just like what you're seeing. So, I'm going to demonstrate it again now. So, this is perfocality, which is a direct illumination technique. The light is directly focused on the problem. And this is decoupling. Why I'm doing perfocality and decoupling, coupling and decoupling, coupling and decoupling. Please, you have to take note of the angle because the angle remains the same. Here, the angle here is zero degree. This is just zero on this angle calibrated scale. So, why I change the mirror focus, you can see I'm not moving the angle. The angle is not moved. Just change the mirror focus. Please do not go drag this angle like this when you're moving. Please, this is not advisable. Please, it's not advisable to be dragging all this along. This is not indirect illumination technique. The same time, do not move the slip lamp by microscope like this. Because if that was a problem I was showing, you see, when you move the instrument like this, the slip lamp, it is still going to allow you to focus on that problem. So please do not move your instruments like this to the left hand side. You're moving to the right hand side. Now you're moving the slip lamp by microscope. You're not focusing directly on this problem you're viewing on the eye. No. The slip lamp by microscope remains static. The angle remains static. The only thing you are going to tamper, tamper with is just the sclerotic scatter knob, which changes the light focus. Just the sclerotic scatter knob. So this is what decoupling means and this is what perfocality means. This is decoupling and this is perfocality. Adjacent to the structure, giving you a white object on a black background directly focused on the problem, which is perfocality. So the next terminology is called isocentric. So the third terminology used in slate lamp by microscopy is called isocentric. I-S-O 
C E A T R I C. Isocentric simply means that the observation system, which is this, and the illumination system, they are centered at the same place with an angle of zero on the angle calibrated scale. This is what is called isocentric. So the isocentric is the position your sleep lamp by microscope should be when you are performing fundoscopy with your Vox lens using the sleep lamp by microscope. As well, if you are performing a retro direct illumination technique of the crystalline lens, the instrument should be in a state of isocentric. Finally, the last but not the least on the terminologies used in sleep lamp by microscopy is called decentration. D E C E N T R A T I O N, decentration. Decentration simply means a vertical displacement of the illumination system from isocentric position. First is isocentric position. So, isocentric position is what you're seeing. The observation system and the illumination system, they are in a state of isocentric. Now, vertically displace the illumination system. This is my illumination system. This is called a decentration lash. Now, this decentration lash, when you hold it like this and press inside, it helps you to tilt this illumination system. So, what decentration means is that with this instrument in a state of isocentric, you have to vertically displace the illumination system. Watch what I'm doing. As I press in, you can see this instrument is tilting. As I press in, it is tilting. When you're performing fundoscopy using the slit lamp by microscope, please, you're going to decenter the instrument. The reason for decentering the instrument is that you want to have a more superior or deeper view of the retina. Just like when you're doing your ophthalmoscopy. Remember, when you just get in the eye, what you see in ophthalmoscopy, it is just the posterior 80 degrees. So if there is need for you to have a more superior view of the retina, you have to tilt your head. That is what you're doing in decentration. So as you tilt this illumination system, it focuses the light more superiorly and as well gives you a better view. At the same time, as you're decentering this instrument, as you're vertically displacing the illumination system, it also helps to eliminate or reduce artifacts on the retina and gives you a better view. So, this is the last of the terminologies used in slit lamp by microscopy. Next, I'll be taking you now on the chronology used in slit lamp by microscopy. So, after the terminologies used in slit lamp by microscopy, Next, we'll be taking is the chronology used in slit lamp by microscopy. What is chronology talking about? It simply refers to the step-by-step -step approach, the sequential approach, the methodology by which the structures of the eye is examined from anterior to the posterior. That is from the external structures of the eye to the internal structures of the eye. So the first structure to be examined is the eyelid. The eyelid, that is the superior eyelid and the inferior eyelid. After the eyelid, the next structure is the eyelid margin, which is the superior eyelid margin and the inferior eyelid margin. Next is the tear film. The next is the conjunctiva. After the conjunctiva, the next thing is now the cornea is what you need to examine. After the cornea, next is now the aqueous humor. After the aqueous humor is now the iris. After the iris is the crystalline lens. After the crystalline lens is the vitreous humor. After the vitreous humor is now the retina. Now, each of the structures I mentioned, they have different illumination techniques in slate lamp by microscope, which can be used to examine them. So, after this, next you're going to now hear from me is the patient instrument clinician preparation before we kick off with the practicals on the different illumination tech so thank you very much once again for watching this video and i'll see you in the next video on the patient instrument clinician preparation thank you